I'm continuing to work my way through the Shameless movies, a series that I'm kind of enjoying most of the movies I've picked up. You know, scrap that. I've enjoyed all the movies I've watched from this company so far. Next up was Four Flies on Grey Velvet, a Dario Argento movie, eh, part of his Animal Trilogy, along with Cat and Nine Tails and The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. This was a movie that, um, one that I've heard a, a fair few things about, and I just wasn't prepared for a couple of things. First of all, the transfer from Shameless is tremendous, one of the best I've seen. I, I was um, kind of shocked with how good this movie looked. And secondly, I was just shocked with how fantastic this movie was. I was blown away with this tale of Roberto, this drummer in a band who has a wife who li lives in his house with a, another woman who's a friend there as well, a, a family relative of his wife. And we're introduced to Roberto just playing the drums while a, a, a fly buzzes around his head and he's trying to play the drums and get to the fly at the same time. It's an interesting setup. We see that somebody's watching Roberto. And after this session is done, he, he notices this man is still kind of lingering about and decides to follow him down into this almost abandoned theatre, is what it looks like. And he approaches the gentleman to find out why he's being watched when things uh, get out of hand and the man pulls a knife. Roberto takes it off him and manages to stab him. And just at that moment, a spotlight shines down upon him. And there is someone with a strange kind of baby mask looking at him shining the light and starts taking pictures of Roberto on what he has done. And that's within the first five minutes of the movie. And from then on, we just get an exercise in tension and suspense. There are some fantastic scenes in Four Flies and Grey Velvet. Um, and a particularly nice way of the story to play out. First of all, the person that saw Roberto do this colour starts to torture him sending him notes, I know what you did, sending him pictures of him doing the event. You know, he'll be having a party with all his friends and he'll look through his music collection, put on a, a record, and when he goes back to the collection, starts going through it again, there is a picture of him doing this murder inserted into his collection. So he knows that it must be somebody that he knows. And this person starts to come into his flat and do things. You know, make noises, break things, leave little things lying about to let them know that they have been there, which is unsettling. You know, this is your safe ground and having somebody invade and do things to it is rather unsettling. And the colour even approaches Roberto, catching him in a noose early on in the movie and says to him, you know, I'm going to kill you at some point. You can't go to anybody for help because of what you did and I will eventually get you. It is just so fascinating to get that kind of scene and then it's just left on tender hooks the rest of the movie as things wrap up it just ramp up the tension ramps up the suspense the scares and what's going on as the paranoia strikes it's so much fun it was so great there is some fantastically shot sequences in here that i really did love there's one where roberto is going to meet a private detective to ask him to do some work and we get an interspersed uh, shot of him driving the car as well as walking down the hallway back to the car going into the office back to the car it's just nicely cut put together scene we have some fantastic characters like the character of god um, who is a, a kind of um, fixer for roberto somebody that he knows somebody that he can rely on that can give him information his name is godfrey but he's called god uh, and he has a kind of friend that works with him too the professor fantastic name for characters and these are all memorable characters that will stay with me for the longest while i, I just marveled at, at some of the things that were going on in this movie there's a scene where the killer places a phone call from a phone box to to somebody in the house to taunt them and uh, the camera kind of follows the cable down the streets through into the building and back up to the other phone. It's perfect. It's just a nice little addition to the movie. There is also this crazy dream that's interspersed all through the movie that Roberto keeps having about a man in, in, in the Middle East having his head chopped off and its meaning, what it refers to. But ultimately, this movie was a absolute joy to watch. It was something that I found riveting. It is by far and away the fa my favourite gi giallo that I have discovered so far. 
Dario Argento is understandably why he gets the reputation that he does. I've seen some of his later movies. I've seen you know some of his more better known movies. Four Flies and Grey Velvet was one that I hadn't seen before. I didn't know anything about and I discovered a truly fantastic movie and one that I feel should be in any uh, movie lover's collection. It is that good an example of this type of movie. I just think it's wonderful. I really do think it's wonderful. It's one of those movies that when it finished, I had to go out and do something, but I really wished I could just have put the disc back to the start and watched it again. The Shameless disc has, uh, you know, a couple of extras, but most notable is the interview with Luigi Cosi, who was the assistant director on this movie. It is about 45, 50 minutes. It is insightful. It is fun. It is a little bit daring in points when he, so he points to similar contemporaries who had similar scenes in movies before this one. It's just a great addition to the film. But just as a whole, Four Flies on Grey Velvet was exciting. It was suspenseful. I had some fantastic scenes. That The one um, in the park where the, the sort of tension kind of builds as this girl realises that she's been locked in there, but she's not alone. It is just terrific right up to the finale um, now I, I put a guess on early on who, who the colour was and luckily I, I was right on this occasion but it didn't rob the movie of any of its effect and I'm pretty sure even on a rewatch this is going to hold up remarkably well you know great performances great camera work some fantastic editing choices some fantastic characters and I didn't even talk about um, the private detective who was perfect you know this kind of guy who is honest look brutally honest sits Roberto down and talks to him and says you know what I've not solved a case in, um, <laughs> in three years I can't remember how many cases he said he had but he says he's not solved one in three years maybe 58 cases and his rationale for Roberto taking him on is he's going to solve one at some point you know, it's just terrific. The conversation that they have is fantastic. It's so just funny, but you can kind of see the guy's point as he twists Roberto around by saying, you know what, I've lost so many. This is going to be the one that I'm bound to win. The kill scenes are, are good and suspenseful, as you would expect, and the typical the kind of things, but it's all about the characters, it's all about the plot, it's all about the situation and the atmosphere that comes across in this movie. Great work, fantastic release, terrific movie, and I cannot wait to watch it again. I would love to know what you guys think of Four Flies on Grey Velvet, so let me know in the comment box below, and I will see you next time. Mind versus film.